right, this video is about counting possibilities. Have you ever looked at your cell phone and wondered out how many different passcodes you could have on your cell phone to unlock it? Or if you're playing cards with the friends and they happen to deal you four, four fours, uh, out of all the possible combinations you could be dealt, how special is this from a deck of 52 cards? Or if I were to have four objects, like markers in this case, and I ask you how many different color orders could I make or arrangements out of four markers, I hope after watching this video that you'll feel confident and be able to answer those three different scenarios. The first thing when we're, when we're trying to figure out how to count possibilities is to think about the sample space that you're working with. Are you working with one sample space or are you working with multiple sample spaces? If you have one sample space, like five people, and I ask you to do something with those five people, like how many different ways could they finish a race where the order's important, or how many different groups of two could I make out of those five people where the order's not as important, those calculations with the one sample space are done differently than when you have multiple sample spaces. So let's say, for example, you want to make outfits where you have to choose from a sample space of shirts, a sample space of, of pants, and a sample space of shoes. We're going to pick one from each of those and make an outfit. This calculation is done differently than when you have one. Or passwords, when you have to choose a different character for each uh, a number of your password, like you have three numbers and then a letter. That calculation from, calculation from the four different sample spaces is, like I said, again, different than how you do one sample space in those kind of problems. So let's first of all focus on the one sample space situation first. So when I have one sample space, there are two kinds of situations you're going to have. If the order is important, where the order matters, we call those permutations, meaning that you're going to do something special with those things you're taking in the group. Like you might place them in a certain spot, or you might arrange them, name them, order them, or something to that effect, give them a title. Once you do something special with the group of things that you're taking, that's called a permutation. If I have a combination where I only make them a group and nothing else, where the order's not even mentioned or it's not even, not even important, like just taking a set of things or a group of things or a team, even possibly co uh, committees, groups of things, that's what we're talking about when we talk about combinations. So order's important versus not important, okay, of this one sample space. So let's look at permutations first. Permutations where the order's important look like this. I have five people, and I might have them run a race, and I want to find out how many different ways could those five people run a race and finish in first, second, or third. Now there's some notation we need to be aware of. There's this NPR option on your, on your calculator, where N stands for the total number of objects you're working with or things you're working with, and then R stands for the number of things that are getting placed. So if I have five people, I'll take my calculator out, type in five first, and then you're going to place them into three spots. Place them into three spots right here. So I'm going to go math, left arrow, so I can select this PRB a little bit faster, for, which stands for probability. I'm going to choose this number two here. Then I hit enter. So I've got five NPR, and then I type in three because I have three things that I want to figure out that I'm going to put in order, first, second, and third. I'm taking three out of the total five and trying to put them in order into three spots. This is the notation that it looks like. So when I hit enter, there are 60 ways to do that. So 60 ways to order these people in the first, second, or third. They could finish that, three, that many different ways. If I just want to take these five people and give them a, a name, like captain or assistant, if I want to name a captain and an assistant out of that team, uh, I would then have five people to put in two spots, and those name spots that they're going to ha are specific. So then I would say, then, well, I want to have five people, then go math, left arrow, and then if you have a newer calculator, you may have to go left arrow twice, and then choose option number two for NPR, and then I'm going to put them in two spots. And then there's 20 ways to do that. Next, if I have to arrange these things and line them up, if I want to take all these five people and put them in a lineup, in a lineup and then reverse the order, kind of like the markers I just asked you about earlier, then I would take these five things and put them in all five spots. Okay, so I would take five, then go math, left arrow, option number two, and then put five here. There's 120 different ways I could arrange these people or put them in different orders uh, in, the, in the lineup. So in this case here, 120 different ways. So when order is important, permutations, this NPR option on your calculator will help you figure those total ways of doing things out. That's all the possibilities for arrangements. Now, combinations are a little different because we're going to say that the order does not matter as much. So with, with combinations, it's the same kind of approach. If I have pairs where there's no mention of the order being important, then I do what's called a combination. So I do the same notation that I did before. I got five people that I want to get in groups of two. So I go on my calculator, I go five people, math, left arrow, option number three now, which is for combinations, and then I select that one, and then I'm going to have them in groups of two, so I'll put a two here, hit enter. There are 10 ways to make five different pairs of people. I could go first and third, first and the fourth, and so on, and pair them up that way. There are 10 ways to do that. 
Also, if I have a sets of three, let's say I want to have these guys get into groups of three, into a group of three. Well, then I could take the first three, I could go the first three and then this one and so on. But a faster way to figure out all those possibilities would be to just go five people, math, left arrow, NCR, right there, option three, and then put them into three spot or groups of three. Again, that's kind of strange, but there are 10 ways to do that as well. This isn't typical, but it can happen. Next, if I want to get teams of four, I want to get a beach volleyball team, and I want to figure out, I want to create a lineup. How many different lineups on the court could I have if four are going to be out there at one time? Well, I can go five, NCR, which is this one down here, option three, and put four down. There are five ways to do that. Now, that might seem obvious, but as you get more and more things or objects to work with in your one sample space, it can get more and more easy to do with the uh, calculator feature of this NCR and NPR. Now, that's one sample space. If I have multiple sample spaces, then I'm looking at like outfits, menu options, and so on. So in this case right here, I'm looking at uh, outfits. Now, the simple idea behind all this is just multiply your sample space options together or your choices. I have five choices of shirts, eight choices of pants, and four choices of pairs of shoes, which means that if I multiply five times eight times four, I'll have 160 outfits. Passwords work the exact same way. You have characters zero through nine, to choose from, which is 10 total options. And you can do that, if I wanted to have a password consisting of two numbers and a letter, then I would have 10, 10, and 26 multiplied together to give you 2,600 different possible ways to do that. Uh, if you talk about not being able to repeat a digit, if you use one of them, the first one, then there's only nine of them left, then you just go 10 times nine times 26 and get your answer that way. So with multiple sample spaces, it's all about multiplying your choices together. If you have one sample space, then we're talking about permutations and combinations. So let's just review real quick here what we're talking about. In one sample space, it's these things, so use your NPR if the order is important. If the order is not important from what you're selecting from this one sample space, then it's NCR on your calculator. And then again, again, if you're doing uh, outfits, menu items, license plates, uh, passwords, passcodes, and so on, where you have multiple sample spaces to choose from, then you just have to multiply your choices together from each sample space. That's it, and I hope this makes a little bit more sense and good luck in your future.